Hi, hi fans, and welcome to another Play Hive Like a Champion video where I help you become a better Hive player and win more, including beating that significant other. I know that's the real reason why you're here. There's somebody in your life that you want to beat. Well, I'm here to help you do just that. Let's see what lessons can learn from this upcoming game. This comes from the Board Game Arena. And it's a game from the 2021 First Quarter Arena Competition. I'm playing white against Francesco Salerno, a.k.a. Frasco. At the time of the game, we were both sitting in the top 10 of the arena standings, and it was an important game for both of us. As you know, the top four players from the arena, who have not already received invitations to the 2021 Online Hive World Championship, will receive invitations from this tournament. With Chisigi and Judoka already qualified, that means the rest of us are targeting 6th position or better. When the game started, Frasco was number 6, and I was number 7. As always, I replay the game on BoardSpace.net, thanks to Dave Dyer, Administrator at BoardSpace, where the game replay and review function is the absolute best. If you don't know Frasco, not only is he one of the best players, he's also a great supporter of the game of Hive, he hosts both the Facebook group and the Discord server, both aptly named Hive the Boardless Game. So let's see what happened. As happened so often in top level Hive, both players started with the ladybugs. I followed with the queen and my first aunt, while Frasco played the mosquito and then the queen. In my book, Play Hive Like a Champion, I identified some opening queen formations. This formation is called a Black Buffered Z Queen Formation. The Black Queen is buffered from the Black Starting Bug, while the White Queen is in contact with the White Starting Bug. In Frank Greasy's book, A Beginner's Guide to Hive, he expanded on opening descriptions by describing the seven possible patterns that the three opening bugs could take. For now, I'm going to call these two a short hook and a long hook. We're all looking forward to World Champion Joe Schultz's second book in the Canon of Hive series. Book two will be about openings. So we'll see his take on how to describe openings when his book comes out. I immediately pin the Black Queen. The ant forms an anchor, providing nearby spawn points to use for attack. The first Black Ant spawns. As an interesting side note, all three Black Ants and one Black Grasshopper spawn in this exact location. I sacrifice one beetle to get the second beetle atop the hive. Meanwhile, black ant number two spawns. When the white beetle climbs up, Frasco plays a defending beetle. At this point, the white mosquito had not yet spawned. I'm always looking to get the mosquito atop the hive like a beetle. Right now, there is a spawn point right here. That instantly gives the mosquito beetle power. At some point, the white beetle will move forward to cover the black queen so that I qualify for the win. But after the black beetle recovers, the mosquito could no longer spawn with beetle power, so I hesitate advancing the white beetle. I'm in danger of not getting a double defender position, so I take a tempo to spawn a defending grasshopper. Throughout the game, I'm going to highlight moves which have a double purpose. The real identifying mark of a true hive master is efficiently using bugs. If a bug placement or movement can serve to exert power in more than one way, it is a definitely successful move. Here the grasshopper gives the queen a second defender, but also threatens to pin the black beetle. If the white grasshopper can jump to here and pin the beetle, it also removes this spot as a black spawn point. Frasco responds by getting his pill bug into a great defensive position, and I jump with my grasshopper. Frasco pinned the queen, made me happy from two standpoints. One, he did not spawn his third ant, and two, he left this spot here available for a second defender. Now I spawn the mosquito, and Frasco has a choice. Spawn another bug? allowing the mosquito to climb up, or waste a tempo pinning it. This point is a good time to mention one of the hive maxims. Surrounding your opponent's queen is not the goal in hive. 
that's just how you win. Too many beginning players fall into the trap of targeting the opponent's queen too early. If you want to become a high champion, you need to understand that concept. Black Ant 3 spawns, the White Mosquito climbs, and the newly spawned Black Ant attacks. Let's stop and look at how the game has progressed, giving particular attention to the concept of qualifying for the win. White is on the verge of qualifying for the win by covering the Black Queen, and with two bugs up could possibly cover the Black Pill Bug as well. Black 2 at this point has qualified for the win, but in a different manner. Black has neutralized the yet-to-be-placed pill bug by limiting its ability to enter the game and defend the white queen. In addition, black is dominating the ant game with three mobile ants. I have two ants in reserve, but my only ant in play is completely out of commission. For now. It's covered by two friendly bugs and pinned. I was happy with the two bugs atop the hive, but since I have a conservative, defensive first personality, I was feeling very uncomfortable at this point. What do you think? If you had to venture a guess, who do you think is going to win? I'll pause here for a moment for you to leave a note down below. I qualify for the win, and now we have a triple beetle stack a black beetle sandwiched between a white mosquito and a white beetle, all atop the black queen. This may seem like a waste of resources, because you'll see later in the game, the white beetle will be able to perform other duties. Frasco spawns a grasshopper, in his favorite spawn point, by the way, and I spawn an ant. This could be considered an ant sacrifice, because black could immediately pin the white ant, but I'm not concerned if this ant pins it, the third beetle climbs up. If this ant pins it, the white queen escapes, and in the process pins the other ant. And if this ant pins it, then this spot is available to place a defensive bug, probably the pill bug. An ambiguous spider spawns and I'm forced to pin it. If I allow the spider to attack here, it does free my ladybug, but it frees his as well, and he would end up with four kill spaces filled and I would end up with no defenders. So the white ant pins the ambiguous spider, and a black beetle spawns. White beetle 2 covers the black mosquito. I don't want it to go exploring around the hive. That could be devastating. Here, let's look at the two options for the black beetle. One would be to climb atop the ant. This would guarantee that it gets up, but also keeps the ant temporarily immobile. The other would be to attack with the beetle. It doesn't climb, but it does free the ant. Frasco chooses the latter. The white grasshopper attacks, and the black grasshopper forms a ring. The ring threatens to free the black ladybug, and if that happens, the pin on the white ladybug becomes a true pin, and it will be much more difficult to free her. If allowed to break the ring, white ant one also ends up pinned and black will be threatening to win on the move with the ladybug going here and the black ant threatening here. If the white ant releases the pin on the black spider, then the black spider has an angle of attack to kick, take the kill shot as well. So what do you think? Do I have any chance? It really was looking bleak. I attacked, gaining the tempo by forcing a response from the black pill bug. Broke the ring with my ant, and when the black ant shifted the pin to my ant, that relieved a little pressure, allowing me to pin the black beetle. Here is another dual purpose move. The white ant pins the beetle, but also sets the block, protecting this kill spot here. The black spider spawns with an angle of attack to the white queen. And finally, I get my pill bug into place. It's not in an ideal position, but at least it's in the game and in the general vicinity of my queen. I've almost negated Francesco's qualification for the win.
Another dual purpose move, not only does the black spider pin my newly spawned pill bug, but it also removes the self pin of the black mosquito. It doesn't make a difference now, but at some point in the future, if the white beetle moves away and something occupies this spot, then the valuable mosquito may be mobile. Knowing this, I immediately spawn my last ant on the spot vacated by the spider. The black spider attacks, and my pill bug warps over the spider, threatening to release the white ant. Black pins the one ant and blocks the other ant. Not wanting the ladybug to come free, the beetle advances, and the next to the last black bug enters the game. And this is what I had in mind when I covered the ladybug. The pill bug warps the spider for the second time, and the black beetle leaves a kill spot to break the ring. What do you think now? Do I have any chances? I'm beginning to think that I might be able to work a draw, but still not confident that I have any winning chances. The pill bug moves forward, and as expected, the black grasshopper jumps into the center of the hive. Even though I have four bugs in reserve, Frasco's domination of the ant game in an excellent anti-spawn defense has left me without much hope for a victory. I only have two anchors and six spawn points. The white spider spawns on one of the six spawn points, setting a block, creating a hex trap that could at some point release my ladybug. Now the mosquito is a bigger danger than the ladybug. Plus from this point, the beetle threatens a kill spot. Not wanting to attack and release the white ladybug, the black ladybug elects to make sure that the white ant will stay pinned, and I set my sights on the enemy pill bug. Another comment about the ladybug pinning the ant here, it also helps place a block on this spot here. Not wanting to risk getting pinned by the grasshopper, the black ant shifts the pin. The white beetle must head back to cover the mosquito, and I'm almost in bug's wing. Almost, but not quite. I have only one mobile bug, and if I move it, the black mosquito is free. But I have one spawn point, and I gladly place a defending grasshopper. Now I think my drawing chances are improving. A series of grasshopper moves opens up the inner hive, and I now aim for an inner hive game. Maybe I have a chance. I want to keep my grasshopper free to possibly use as an attacker, even though I know my spider will probably never move. But the ring forcibly frees the white grasshopper. And when Fr Frasco threatens to win, the grasshopper switches from defense to attack. I want to keep my grasshoppers away from the pill bug, and this has an added benefit of pinning the pill bug in place. When the black beetle advances, I feel forced to place my last bug, Swamp Lady Bug, who is now mobile. I don't want the beetle to cover the ladybug, so she exits and has a great target spot. Frasco must pick his poison. Which bug does he want to release? Another dual purpose move. When the black ant attacks, it also blocks the white ant. And now, leaving the beetle pinned, the ladybug attacks, and with the ring in place, the grasshopper threatens to win the game. The pill bug moves, and the other grasshopper changes kill spots, opening up this spot for the white beetle if the opportunity presents itself. The ring is dangerous, so black breaks the ring but relieves some pressure on my queen. And the black beetle now must keep the queen covered to keep her from attempting to flee. And finally, the pill bug has become a proximity pill bug. I didn't want my ladybug to get warped out, and now my beetle is free. I'm no longer thinking draw, I'm thinking victory. I would rather not risk the beetle getting covered on the ground level. It's much more valuable atop the hive. Knowing that this pill bug move is coming, Grasshopper jumps again, 
providing a bridge for the beetle to cross. And cross the bridge the beetle does. And heads for the pale bug. The black grasshopper performs a pin replacement, but the white spider is now free to move. I thought about this move for a long time. I fill a kill spot on my own queen with a bug that's not a very good defender, but on the other hand, the ring may free an ant. Black must keep the ant blocked. If it gets to here, I will win. It's quite instructive how often the attacking grasshoppers jump across the queen. In this case, it is to help keep the black mosquito immobile if the ring is broken, and now the beetle has a killed spot to target. Note how many mobile black bugs are not actually mobile. The ladybug is keeping this ant out of play. This ant is keeping this ant blocked. This ant is keeping this ant pinned. And this grasshopper is keeping the ladybug pinned. Black's mobility is strictly an illusion. With the true pin on the black pill bug, I'm again threatening to win. Black must pre-swamp. Now, if the beetle attacks, the pill bug can move. Let's try it a different way, but the ring forces the beetle to recover the mosquito. A lost tempo shifting the pin on the grasshopper to place the block. And now I take over the ant game. The black ants must protect this kill spot. Warping away the black grasshopper from a kill spot buys me some time, and the two ants qualify for the win in a different manner. We've seen covering the queen. We've seen covering the pill bug. We've seen keeping the pill bug away from its friendly queen. And now here we have smothering the pill bug. Nothing can stop two of the three bugs from filling the final two kill spots. There was a defense, however. Let's go back to here. What do you think? What can black do? What if the black beetle goes to here and then to here? If it ever covers the white beetle, I don't think the white can win. Thanks, Francesco, for a great game. What did you say way back at the very beginning? Did you think that I could win in any way? I had my doubts. It was a classically complex tournament hive game. What did you learn? Will you be able to play Hive like a champion? Leave a comment below. Until next time, this is Randy Ingersoll signing off.